Hi, today I'm going to talk about image to 3D. I'm always on the lookout for AI tools that are going to make 3D meshes. So this one, which I was watching a channel by somebody called Theoretical Media. I'll put the links in the description. He does some really helpful videos on creativity using AI and all the developments. And this one um, is called CSM and it's generate 3D worlds from Im images and videos. So a lot of software like this, it's quite hard because you have to install it on GitHub, but this one is quite um, easy. Um, and you can see there's a nice video there and it shows all the images that you can, the 3D you can make. Um, there are tiers, there are um, subscription packages that you can buy, but you can use a free one. The subscription ones say, you know, they make slightly better meshes apparently, but you can see these 3D models here just made from images. So I've been playing around at, on it, and if we go um, to this one, should load, and I've just pl been playing around with some things. So obviously, when you're using a tool, you want to think about what you want to use it for. So obviously, if you're capturing, capturing something in real life, you can go here, and you can do, use something like Luma Labs AI, um, using, you know, nerfs, neuro, whatever thing means. Um, so you make a video, it's a bit like photogrammetry, but it guesses a lot of things. So this, this is very messy, but it captured a box I made. So if you've got something in real life, you really want to be messing around with things like that, or using things like that, as it were. Um, but here, um, if you're just working straight from images, then this tool, CSM, is actually quite useful. So here are some models that I've made just messing around. So some of these were using, I used Playground AI um, just to generate some uh, of these images like this woman in the metro station and this bee woman which is kind of like from one of my drawings so these are actually from my drawings using playground ai um so it's image to image so it's making more photorealistic characters i was just playing around with that i actually prefer my original drawings but you know if you wanted to do something conceptual you can do that and make kind of things more realistic um so firstly some of the things didn't work so the robot didn't work and what you have to do is you have to sort of upload it and then you it gives you a sort of really basic mesh and then you have to refine it. It takes quite a while if you're not on the subscription. Um, and then you just down, so you get this one, for example, and you can see here it gives you the, it should give you the image, the model. And you can see it's made quite a good piece there. If I go to Blender, I'll open up a scene where I imported these. So you ex export those as OBJs and I'll just open up the scene there. And you can see it's in Blender. And it comes in, obviously, with the textures. So the textures here are, you know, on the model. So if I pick this one, which came out quite well, I've added the original image. So you can see it's kind of changed. It's almost as if it's looking, it's found something else, perhaps like another 3D model, because you can see that's actually quite different. Every time you make a new version of, you, you can upload it again, and it'll make a kind of different model. Um, so this one you can see is really nice, but the textures didn't come out properly. So I don't know why that's happening. Perhaps someone can let me know in the comments. Um, if we go to the UV editor up here in Blender, we can see how it's unwrapped. So I'll just press tab and then A to select all. And you can see it's kind of basically unwrapped it sort of as kind of separate islands, which is just basically, you know, how it's done the UV. Um, that's okay, and that means that we can also take this into um, um, Substance Painter and do it a bit better. I'd probably say, you know, obviously the mesh isn't perfect, it's got this kind of bend here. If I go into um, edit mode, you can see it's made up quite a lot of polys here. And yeah, it, it's not ideal, um, but you know, and if there are some errors on the model, you can always go to sculpt modes and mess around with it. Um, if you want to increase the mesh using sculpt mode with the DIN topo tool, that actually destroys the texture. So what you may have to do is make kind of, you, you might have to remesh it using something, well, make a copy of this, remesh it using quadrimesh, then bake this texture onto the new uh, mesh. But that, that, you know, entails a lot of work. So, um, you know, the robot didn't come out very well. As I said, it's, um, I think it's because it's shiny. The, this one came out well, so I think it's a really good tool to start playing around with and it's only going to improve So I'm definitely going to keep looking at what CSM and how it's improving and you can see this image here You know the model is very kind of Jaggedy and, and if you've got skills in 3d like blender or max or Maya 
already or C4D, sometimes it's going to be much quicker to make the object, um, you know, using old school and just kind of do a quick projection map of an image like this or fiddle around in Photoshop with the textures. Um, but, you know, so always try to strategize what, strategize what you're going to be making. If you're coming from straight from um, AI and you don't know 3D, these give you quite nice meshes to play around with. Now, what I'm really interested in is um, getting 3D prints. So if we go to the um, mode where it, we can't see the textures with the mode in Blender, of course, it's called solids, we can see that these um, now the meshes really don't look that great. So a lot of it at the moment relies on the texture. And you can see this eye is distorted quite a lot. If I go to edit mode, you can see, yeah, and there's a big hole there. So I'd have to use sculpt mode and, and sculpt that out. So remember, if you're sculpting, don't do it in a topo because it will destroy the texture and then you'll have a whole you'll have to solve that by making a new proxy mesh and mapping mapping onto that. Um, I think it's good. It's definitely promising. As I say, these meshes are quite rudimentary. They're not going to convert into very good um, 3D prints because obviously unless you have a really super duper printer, it's not going to have the textures on. But you can send off to Shapeways and have the textures. So what I'd recommend is use these as a base and with your sculpting process, you know, for example, this one, uh, then you could obviously go to sculpt mode and then switch on din topo that will destroy the texturing but then you can actually really start to make a really nice mesh but then again you know you have to balance it with what you're making and sometimes there's a better solution so the danger with ai you might think this is great but then you should remember your previous skills and if you can do something quicker but i think it's a really really nice tool to get things into 3d and it's really promising i'm really excited because for me 2d ai is nice but um you know, doing AI that's making 3D graphics for me, that I do sculpture and 3D graphics, that's, this is basically the revolution that I'm looking at. And as I said, you can take it into Painter as well. So to conclude, this is a good tool, check it out. It's not doing perfect things, which is quite good for people that rely on modeling for work. But if you are a model modeler, you just need to use this technology and, and use it to your advantage, that's what I say. And it's gonna speed up your movies and things as well when it really, really takes off. And I think CSM, this one will really develop. As I say, this is using the free version, so I'm not entirely clear on the quality of the models on the the, the extra tiers that you have to pay for monthly or yearly. Um, check that out, um, pay for it. You can, if you want to donate to me for a month, I'll do a whole in-depth thing about that. But at the moment, I'm not really prepared to pay for anything like that. Thank you very much for watching. And remember, AI is another tool along with digital and also traditional work. And if you want to know my process, check out my website, jamesoverlart.com, check out my videos. And also you can buy my book, the links in the description, Cities of the Imagination. And you, it's basically create cities in the imagination using lots of different tools such as maker tools, traditional tools, and also AI. There you go. So thanks very much for watching. And if you're interested in learning more about creativity, AI and traditional, combining it all together, seeing what happens and seeing what you can do in this amazing time, please subscribe. Comments, welcome. Speak later.